1998. Um, so what I wanted to do today was just give you a little bit about my background, um, my work history, my education, how, how I kind of made a jump from you know, going from investment banking to startup land, get into Red Mango a little bit, tell you a little bit about the frozen yogurt business, and just leave it up to you guys to ask me questions about the industry um, or about the business or about myself. That's going to be really helpful for you guys. I want to be here, be a resource for you guys here. Um, so feel free to interrupt me whenever you want. Um, so I grew up in LA. I was actually born in Korea, grew up in LA, uh, and uh, went to a, a school in Berkeley. Uh, graduated in 98 from the undergraduate business program. Um, during school, I actually did a lot of different things. I went in um, thinking that I was going to be a lawyer, a politician, um, a doctor at some point. Uh, the number of things that my parents wanted to be, me to become and uh, never materialized. Um, and I found business as a, as, a, as a really good balance for both my you know, kind of logical side and my creative side. Um, so I started working actually during school uh, while I was going to, uh, to Haas um, at various places nearby to make sure that I liked uh, business. So I was actually the youngest intern at Deloitte Institution in San Francisco. I did that for a year or two. Uh, worked at JP Morgan for another summer. Just got a lot of real uh, work life experience. I found out that that's, that is what I wanted to do. So I graduated in 98 and went into uh, investment banking at a company called Donald's Lumpkin and Genrad in LA. Um, and there I worked on a number of uh, different clients in lifestyle and entertainment and media and, and uh, consumer products companies, uh, doing M&A and debt financing. But I, I got tired of that really quickly. In about a year I quit. I uh, just couldn't handle the hours. I didn't like the fact that I was constantly pitching and going to meetings without actually creating something. And you know, growing up, I, my, both my parents were entrepreneurs, my mom and dad immigrants here. Um, all of this is about you know, how are your daily sales at your store, or you know, how quickly can you expand this business. It's a very, you know, kind of an entrepreneurial driven uh, family that I grew up in. Um, so I quit, and that was back in 99 that I quit. And that was kind of when the internet sector was, was growing and all the dot coms were developing, and something that was very interesting to me. So a couple of friends of mine out of UCLA started this company called Stamps.com. Uh, they sell postage over the internet. Uh, three UCLA grads, and um, I thought it was a pretty interesting concept, so I quit. I uh, joined the three guys very early on in 99, and um, we grew the company from you know, like 10 people to 400 people over two and a half years after going through an IPO and a secondary. So that was kind of my first experience at joining a company and you know, growing it into something that was really big. Um, after that, I, I quit Stamps and I started another, um, joined another startup company in the telecom space. Light cross, native optical network. And if you guys heard of companies and stocks like JDS Unit Days and North back in the day. Um, so I joined another company uh, that was backed by venture capital guys. And by then I had a really good relationship with venture capital backed uh, companies and investors, so they kind of trusted me to be their finance and operations guy. Um, so employee number six there, um, and then we grew that company to about 50 plus people, uh, raised a lot of private equity, and sold it in 2002. Um, and after that, I just did consulting and took some time off. I dabbled in media and entertainment. Um, and, and all along, you know, my friends in Korea were doing this thing called Red Mango. Sounds like a thing I'm looking at right now. Um, and I was just kind of doing my own thing here, consulting. Um, and then when Pinkberry started in 2005 and got really popular in 06, they gave me a call today. There's this company out there called Pinkberry doing exactly the same thing we're doing. Um, can you help us uh, uh, compete with them? And, God, it's like a, you know, they're very popular. Um, everyone, celebrities love them. They have 10 plus locations. How am I going to take an ice cream concept from Korea and compete with something that's already um, well established in LA? But I took that challenge on, and um, you know, that was kind of the most entrepreneurial thing that I did because in technology and media, it, you kind of have a competitive advantage over your other guys who are very competitors because you have either technology or IP kind of protecting that or good people. The frozen yogurt industry is really tough to really be a unique player um, in that space. So I thought about it for a while. And um, in July of 06 or 07, we opened our first store. And now we have 15 locations um, in LA, New York, and Seattle. And we're considered by the media to be you know, one, of two, one of the two top players in the frozen yogurt industry. So that's kind of how I got to where I am today. Um, I think kind of personality-wise, what enabled me to do a lot of this is I'm a big risk taker, and I actually don't plan like a year ahead. So people always say, hey, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be 12 months from now or six months from now? I really don't know the answer to that. I'm a very instinctive person, 
and kind of feel things and I just kind of feel if it's right or wrong. So everything that I've done in my career has always been very instinctive. So even with the frozen yogurt business, everything that I do, and I'll talk a little bit about, about how I decided to, why I decided to compete against pink hair and how I exactly did that. It's all about intuition. And you can do all the analysis in the world and we've done that, but at the end of the day it was about how I felt. And that's kind of the one key differentiating feature that I noticed in a lot of entrepreneurs. Is high risk tolerance, but very, very instinctive. And you'll notice that in a lot of entrepreneurs that you see you know, in, in, in almost any space. Um, just kind of stepping back and just kind of narrowing in on red mango, you know, and you guys can ask me questions anytime now, but kind of you know, filling in, you're like, there's this concept called Pink Berry. It looks exactly the same in terms of the decor and the product offerings as what we have in Korea, but people don't know that here in the US, and they don't care about that. And they're very popular. Um, all the celebrities are going, and it's on KTLA News, it's the case that lunch with you know, 1,000 parking tickets. And how do you compete with that kind of media and kind of go into the market? with zero stores, even though you have 100 plus in Korea, and say, hey guys, we were the original, who's going to care? <laughs> um, so that was the biggest challenge for us, is, is you know, how do you go about doing that? And then, it, and then the other challenge is, say I do go and open a store in a great location, how do I differentiate myself so that people who don't know that Red Mango is the original or don't care, don't call us the copycat of Red uh, Pinkberry? Just another thing for everyone, especially when you have snowberry and kiwi berry and big <laughs> mango. And so that's like my first challenge. I was like, oh my god, how exactly do I stand out from this crowd? Um, and secondly, you know, do I compete with them in LA where they have 15, 20 locations, or do I go to other markets? And what are the risks of doing that? You know, it's not tested there. I mean, we know it works in LA, but it's so crowded here. So there's all these variables that kind of that we had to address. Um, and I think we did a good job. <laughs> how many of you guys have been, have been to a Red Mango in LA? Very few. How many of you guys have been to a Red now. <laughs> so yeah, just go check it out. Um. <laughs> Can eat coupons? <laughs> Give you free coupons if you do. Uh, the pink berry crowd over there. <laughs> um, but no, that's an interesting question that I'll pose to you guys is, you know, you're, you're entering a very, a market with very low barriers to entry. I mean, it's not hard to open a frozen yogurt store. In fact, a lot of people have done it and called it something very. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you enter a marketplace that's already been defined by culture and by people and well recognized, you know, with only one thing, which is a story, or that you are the original and you started this first? How do you grab the attention of media? How do you grab the attention of customers? How do you get people excited? When we opened our first store in Mustard Village, which is about 400 yards north of Pinkberry, um, across the two movie theaters, we had a line about 1,000 people deep waiting for the grand opening. It was ridiculous. So we were able to generate that drive. And, we've done, we, and we did it in a very clever way, which continues to work in a lot of the stories. But I'll just throw it out to you guys, like, what would you have done well, to really I just have a question, like yeah. taste-wise, like I've been to people once, right. but then like.